Oh, thank you. Okay, I've been excited about getting this for a while. It came in a different box to this, but I removed the outer packaging because, I mean, the postman looked healthy, but you can't tell these days. He could have had the Peroni virus, not the Peroni virus. Cood is 19. It's like a cheap computer that's really small that you can plug straight into your computer or a TV and just control it with a keyboard or mouse or whatever control interface you can think of. Um, you can use it to control robots, you can use it to write programs, you can use it to play computer games. I'm going to use this one just for browsing the internet, watching videos, streaming, YouTube. The Raspberry Pi 4 comes in different sizes, 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabytes and 4 gigabytes of RAM. So this runs 4 gigabytes of RAM. What does that mean? RAM. A ram is an uncastrated male sheep. So it's like horsepower, but with rams. No. Ram means random access memory. So it's like the computer's short-term memory. This is the best one. I'm going to do my first unboxing video. Let's open it. This is very exciting. Not for the video, but I friggin' love Raspberry Pis. I think I've got a problem. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero. Pi 1. This is the Raspberry Pi 2. 3, version 1 and version 2. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. This is also a Raspberry Pi 4, but it's a bit better. Ooh, look at that. Okay, that's the Raspberry Pi 4 power supply. That's actually quite a nice case. HDMI output. I think that's either the micro or the mini. I can't remember what they're called these days. A memory card. We've got a little fan. Keeping it cool. It's cool enough already, but you know. What the fuck is this? Little, little dangle dangle dongle. Sexy little tiny screwdriver. And here's three heat sinks. We have to attach them. The large square heatsink goes on the main processor here. The rectangular one goes on the memory here. And the small square one goes on the USB chip here. Okay, let's do that. The heatsinks have a conductive double-sided adhesive on their backs and their large surface area helps dissipate the heat from the chips. Sorted. There is four screw mounts to secure the board to the case which we will quickly screw in. The heat sinks are a precaution if you want to push the processors to do some heavy tasks in the future. And the case not only looks good, it helps prevent any accidental damage to the board itself. Insert the SD card and we're ready to attach the cooling fan. One, two, three, four. This is the 5 volt pin. This is where we connect the red wire on the fan. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the ground pin. This is where we connect the black wire of the fan. There. It's very simple. Try not to get it wrong. You want these two pins. When you connect the fan, for optimal performance, you want it to be drawing air in through the top and blowing it straight over the heat sinks. Now let's give it a test to see if it works. Brilliant, and we've got it connected the right way round. So let's put the lid on and see if it all works. It's a bit noisy. But some people think that little fans are cool. I do like this case though. I'm going to go and install this on one of the old TVs we've got to make it a computer. Move this fucking thing. <coughs> Shit. Ah, here we go. The classic Raspberry Pi rainbow box. There's the Raspberry Pi logo. And boom, there's our Raspbian desktop OS. So when we boot up for the first time, the username of the Pi is Pi. P-I. And the password is Raspberry. You want to change these before you do anything. And go with something more secure than password. There's lots of automated bots crawling around the web looking for ways to get into your systems. Once you put in your Wi-Fi password, you're ready to go surfing. Or even have a little explore, see what this computer operating system can do for you. If you want to do some word processing, this is very good. Hello world, this is my first word processing document. You can even play Minecraft on the Pi. Yay! 
One of the other things that you should get to know with the Raspberry Pi is Terminal. When you open Terminal, write the command sudo apt-get update. Don't forget the hyphen. And sudo apt-get upgrade. That will make sure you're running the latest version of the Linux kernels. Reboot the Pi to make sure all updates take effect. Now let's test it out for surfing the web. See if it loads things like YouTube. Hello world, my name is Mr. Drew P and this is my YouTube channel. Here's a video of me planting potatoes. Amazing, right? So this Raspberry Pi is the newest and the most powerful you can get. It cost me about 100 British Earth Pounds. That's like 125 Yankee Doodle Dandy Dollars. Or 850 Danish Krona if you live in the North Pole. This would make a great gift for children. If you want to get them into programming. Or just give them the freedom to have their own personal computer, but you don't want to fork out the big bucks. Get one of these, and one of these. It's amazing. It's a great toy to have during lockdown. See, most personal computers run on Windows or the Mac operating system. And they're expensive. This is why Apple and Microsoft have both made thousands of pounds in the last decade. But the Raspberry Pi runs on something called Linux, which is an open source operating system, which is made by people for people for free. And it's a pretty good operating system to use. I would recommend it. Raspberry Pi gets a thumbs up from me, five stars. If you want one, click the link in the description. I'm going to go and connect this up to one of the TVs in the other room.